Hallelujah. 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 Amen. And I'll tell you this just before we get in the Word. Folks, I'm telling you, you keep saying it. And, and I, need, I need you to understand this. It's, it's because you have what you say. You cannot get around that. That's why I've been teaching you over the last few weeks. You've got to be intentional with your words. If you don't mean it, don't you say it. If you don't know what to say, don't you say anything. Silence is better than saying the wrong thing. Amen. Are you, are you following me? And we're we're going to get into some of these things today. But, you know, I've, I've had people say, well, I'm believing for a new car. All right. Then if you're believing for a new car, <laughs> amen, you got to find the car you believe is yours. And then start saying it. Yeah, but I, I don't understand how, listen, listen, listen. You will have what you say. Amen. People say, oh, that's just mind science and that's, that's just positive thinking. No, it's Bible sense. Yeah. Jesus didn't say these things to make them true. They were true when he said them. Yes. Jesus is the one that said you'd have what you say. Amen. 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 Do you see that? Now you can't dog cuss the one you have and expect God to give you a better one. This is what you have. Now people say, how would you do it? Well, listen, don't just go do what I would do, but here's what I would say. Now, Lord, this is the best I have right now. This is the best car I can afford right now. Right? And I'm thanking you for blessing this car. I thank you that this car runs smooth. I thank you that it runs well. Amen. Amen. Now, Lord, now, Lord, if this thing needs a repair, I'm expecting you to give me the money for it. Amen. Well, what are you doing? Every time you believe in the money to repair your car, your faith is being built that God, if God can bring you the money to put new tires on your car, God can bring you the money to pay for a new car. But see, it's like we've been talking about being led by the Spirit. If you're not willing to practice on the unimportant things of life with your faith, then when something important does come up, you won't have any faith to use. Amen. Amen. If, I can't, if I'm not using my faith to believe God for a new suit, what's going to happen when something important comes along? Well, my faith won't be built. Amen. I'll tell you what, the other night, we, were, we had gotten in late and the baby had been out all, all week late. We'd been in service every, almost every night, but Tuesday. And uh, we were laying there and it, I don't know, it was up around maybe midnight, one o'clock in the morning. And man, that loud thunder started in Little Rock. And uh, you say, what'd you do? Boy, I sat right straight up and I said, you stop it. You stop it now in Jesus' name. That baby has been not sleeping all week. Now you stop. You're not going to wake her up. You go away from here. Now you, you can think whatever you want. I don't care. It never thundered again. I've, I've been highly developing my faith in speaking to storms. I've been speaking to them for 20 years. Marie Price said we used to get good snows all the time. She said pastor started pastoring the church and we hadn't had a good snow yet. And you won't, especially on the weekends. Why? We're having church. Little Rock's about to have a drastic reduction in ice storms in the, in the winter. Why? Because we're not going to have it. People say, you really believe that? I believe that the same power that dwells in me, or dwell in Jesus, dwells in me. And Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, the prototype of how I'm to exercise my faith, when he was in a storm, he didn't step up and do anything other than speak to it. And it obeyed him. Amen. I'm telling you, 
what you say is coming to you. Well, it seems like it's taken a while. You haven't been highly developed in it. As you highly develop yourself in understanding that I live by words. It's not just positive and negative. I mean, you're not just going to go out there and be negative, but you live by words. Your day today is going to go the way you say it. That's why I wrote in the book, First Words Matter, Last Words Stand. Words set the course. It's not just positive words. You have everything you say. Amen. Oh, glory. So, we're going to teach over the next few minutes, next little bit, next while, (laughs) till I get done. On faith never fails. Now, it never fails, but I'm, I'm teaching this for a reason. Very often when someone says they're standing on the Word and standing in faith, and that person, there's been instances where people have failed to receive, either themselves or someone else will say, well, you know, they had a faith failure. Or we'll talk about somebody and say, well, you know, that, I don't know, they, they, they seem to have a faith failure. Well, faith never fails, and faith never fails for three very important reasons. And we'll look at them real quickly. Number one, faith comes from the Word of God and is based on the Word of God. Now, I'm talking about faith for the things of God. Faith for healing comes from the Word of God. Faith for finances, faith for victory comes from the Word of God. Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. Notice it says, So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now, the Word never fails. The faith the Word produces never fails. But someone will say, but you know, I knew so and so and they had faith. And they didn't get their miracle. You know, they didn't get healed or they died sick or they were believing this and they this. Okay, I understand what you're saying. But the faith that comes from the Word of God never fails. Because it's produced by the Word. And the Bible lets us know the Word is unchanging. It's unchangeable. It cannot change. Do you see this? Number two, the faith we have is God's faith. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Have faith, Jesus said in the King James Bible, have faith in God. Now your center column reference, many of them say, have the faith of God. Young's literal translation says, have the faith of God. So, the faith that I possess and use is God's faith. Why? It comes from God's Word. God has nothing that fails. For instance, the love that you have is the love of God, according to Romans 5, 5, that's been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. And what's it say in 1 Corinthians chapter 13? It says, now by faith, hope, and love, these three. And it says, love never fails. Why does love never fail? It's of God. So why does your faith never fail? It's of God. Now, someone will say, but I was believing for this, and it didn't come to pass. Now, wait a minute. There's a, very, there's a very important component there that you mentioned. You. Do you know you can have something that's perfect and it's working, and you use it imperfectly, and it won't work right? Amen. Have, have you ever seen somebody opening a paint can with a car key? You can do it. But that's not what the key was made for. Matter of fact, you can bend the key, break the key, 
ruined the key. Am I right, Steve? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Not because he's done it, he's seen it done. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. You know, my father was raised so far back in the country, they use hoodows for chickens. And uh, <laughs> they had a, <laughs> took the <laughs> Saturday night Grand Ole Opry till Friday to get there. <laughs> and in any event, you know, they didn't have a lot of locks on the doors, so they would take a butcher knife and put it in the, in the frame right here, you know, because the door would open in. And I, I don't know what good that would do, you know. Maybe, maybe give you enough time to scream, I guess. But uh, the point is, my, my mother used to laugh at that, I, you know, because he, it was just habit. Well, you know, you can use a knife for that, but that's not what it's made for. Amen. Right? If you use the perfect faith of God imperfectly, it wasn't the faith that failed. Do you see this? This is important. Because it's, it, it answers a lot of questions. Now you wouldn't think you have to say these things, but you do. Because people, people will hear something like I've been talking about words. And they think, well, I'm just going to go out here and say it, and it's going to happen in three days. No, it's not. It probably won't, especially if you're just hearing it. But the Bible says if you keep saying it, it will happen. Notice Jesus didn't say, if you say it one time. He said, if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it would obey you. Right? Well, well, the fig tree died in one night for Jesus. Jesus was highly developed in believing that he would receive what he said. See, you got to be highly... Am I helping you this morning? you you got to be highly developed in it. You can tell when a person's developed or not because they say, yes, bless God, I'm healed, I'm well, I'm whole. And then the next day, dear God, I'm hurting, I don't know, I thought I was healed. See, they're not, it, they're not bad people. They want to believe God. They're just not highly developed in believing they'll have whatever they say. Amen. Do do you see this? Number three. The faith that we have was given to us by God. Romans chapter 12 and verse 3. For I say through the grace that is given to me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according, notice here's your phrase, as God hath dealt to each man the measure of faith. The measure of faith. Almost every translation says, the King James says the measure, Almost every other translation says a measure of faith. But here's the point. You, you don't, God doesn't have two different kinds of faith. They're all His faith. So God has dealt or given to each man a measure of faith. And the measure that we were given was personally given to us by God. And God gives us nothing that is a failure. Now, if faith cannot fail, then why are there people who have failed in their faith? Well, we'll look at it. Number one, failure to rightly divide the word. Failure to rightly divide the word. Look at Mark chapter 11. Failure to rightly divide the word. You know, the Apostle Paul wrote Timothy and he said, Rightly dividing the word. Study to show yourself approved. A workman worthy of his hire that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. But the phrase rightly dividing means to cut straight the word. Cut it straight. In other words, cut it right. You, you have to rightly divide the word. Alright. Mark 11 and verse 23 and 24. Now notice what it says. For truly I say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, 
and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Now is that what the Bible says? It is. Now notice something. Let's, let's rightly divide the word. Jesus said we would have whatever we say. Now this is important. Your words have to line up with what you say you're in faith about. That's making the mouth-heart connection. Your, your words have to line up with what you say you're in faith about. Why? He said, I'd have whatever I say. And that's why you can't say, well, let, let me say it this way. Let me say this, and then, I'll, then I'll, I'll say it another way. You cannot say you're in faith for healing, and you're talking sickness. Now, understand this. You can say you're in faith for healing and be talking sickness, but you're not. Why? Because you're having what you're saying. See, this, that's not rightly dividing the word. Jesus said you'd have whatever you say. So I can't say at one moment, I'm healed, I'm whole, I'm well, and the next day, talk about how sick I am, and nothing's getting better, and I don't feel any better. At that, at that moment, I have not rightly divided the word. This is why some people have what they call a faith failure. It's because words, faith is, remember, faith is a seed planted or dug up by your words. And when you plant the seed of faith, that's where you stay. Now, that doesn't mean you don't go to the doctor. That doesn't mean you don't take medicine. I'm going to get into that. But the point is, to talk about rightly dividing the word, there are people that, that will say, at one moment, I'm healed, I'm whole, I'm well, and then the next moment, be talking about how bad it is and how bad they feel and how sick they are. That's not rightly dividing the word. You're missing it. Amen. Because it's a violation of what Jesus said. He said you would have what you say. You can't say, I'm sick and don't feel well, nothing's getting any better, and expect to feel good and strong and everything getting better. Because you'll have what you say. That same person will say, you know, Jesus said I could have what I say. But if I'm not having what I say I'm saying, am I saying it? All I got to do is look in your garden and see what kind of seed you sowed. If I come to your house and you got watermelons all over your backyard and you tell me you planted turnip seeds, I'm going to disagree. Because <laughs> them are the funniest looking turnips I ever saw. <laughs> Amen. Now, you understand this? Now, even, even if you've done this, don't get condemned if this is, this is the fix. You cannot say... You're in faith for prosperity and be talking the problem. Now, I mean, you can say that, but you're not in faith. Do you see this? The words that you speak strengthen your faith. They strengthen your faith or weaken your faith. They, they strengthen your faith or they weaken your faith. I want to be strong in faith. Remember what the Bible says about Abraham? That, that he staggered not at the promise of God, but was strong in faith. What's the next phrase? Giving glory to God. Well, what does that mean? That means he was giving, he was giving thanksgiving and praise and glory to God for bringing the promise to pass. 
He didn't see his body changing naturally. He wasn't any stronger physically. Sarah was no more fruitful. She was no more able to bear a child then than she was at 18. But what did Abraham do? He kept his mouth in line with what God said and continued to call those things that be not as though they were. So what Romans 4 says. It says Abraham became like God in that he called those things that were not as though they were. Amen. Do you see this? Strong in faith, giving glory to God. You may be dealing with an issue, dealing with a circumstance, but your faith begins to get strong the more you talk to the circumstance and, and say what God said about it. The key to receiving what you say is that you got to be saying there's a lot of good people come to good faith churches and don't receive what is in the Word of God because they will amen the principles and they'll amen what we say, but then to go home and do it is a totally different thing. When Abraham saw his body, the, the Weist Bible says that Abraham didn't consider his body. Now very often when we teach that, people will say, look, he just didn't pay attention to his body. It's not what it says. It says he didn't consider it, meaning he didn't consider it to be a reason that God couldn't do what he promised. The more you declare the word into your situation, the more you will consider your situation not to be a reason that God can't do what he said. Because your strength, your, your faith is being strengthened at the expense of your circumstance. A lot of people's circumstance is strengthened at the expense of their faith. But the more you talk faith, the less strength your circumstance has. The more you say what God said, the less strength your problem has. Because you're depleting it of its energy source, which are the words you say. If you won't empower it with your words, it has no power. Oh, glory to God. But your faith needs to hear your words. Amen. Yeah, but my mind, you need to talk to your mind. You can't outthink your mind. You can't outthink the devil. He can throw a hundred thoughts an hour into your mind. And you can't outthink him. You can't outthink your mind. You can't cast down a thought with a thought. You have to open your mouth and declare how it's going to be because that's the dominion God gave Adam was the dominion of words. Amen. And when that thought comes into your mind that you're not going to make it or you're going to do this or you're going to fail, then you got to open your mouth and say, no, 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 no. Thanks be unto God that always gives me the victory. Thanks be unto God that always causes me to triumph. No weapon formed against me will prosper. No weapon formed against me will prosper. How many times I had to say it? Who's counting? You say it. Until your faith gets big enough to run it out of your life. Amen. Amen. Do, do, do you see this? Amen. For a lot of people, faith didn't fail. Their words destroyed their desired results. What did Jesus say? Can we look there at Mark eleven twenty four 24 again? Notice what he said. What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and what will happen? You'll have them. But what's the key here? What you desire. A lot of people have used their words to destroy their desired results. And I don't doubt they had good desires. Nobody in here desires to be sick. Right or wrong? If you do, we're going to be praying for mental imbalances here in a minute. 
No, nobody in here wants to be broke. Right? I've been broke and rich is better. Amen. I've been sick and well's better. But, but, but here's the point. You can't, you can't, well, let me say it this way. The desired result is the image that you have from the Word of God. So you're saying, I see me as healed. You look in the mirror and you say, there's a healed man, healed woman of God. I'm well and whole in Jesus' name. Now that's, that's what we should be saying. But for a lot of people, they'll say, well, I'm believing that God's going to heal me or that God has healed me. And then right on the other hand, they use, those, they use the same power of words to destroy their desired results. Well, I believe God healed me, but why don't I feel better? Wait, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. You, you, what does the Bible say hindered the people of Israel from receiving from God? What's that? Unbelief. Unbelief. It says the word preached was not mixed with faith. Is that right? Well, how do you mix it? The tongue is the mixer. You put it in your heart and you mix it with your words. And you unite faith to your circumstance with your mouth. Hallelujah. That's the only way it happens. Doesn't happen any other way. You got to look at that, whatever it is, and declare the word of God and get the word of God into the circumstance. But the same words that will produce life in that circumstance will kill it and destroy my crop of healing or prosperity or victory or, or whatever it may be. Closeness with God. It bothers me when people come up and they go, I just feel so far away from God. You're having what you say. The devil can't move you away from God. Why? The Bible says nothing can separate me from the love of God. Right? The Bible says God dwells in me and lives in me and walks in me and talks in me. You can't get any closer than in me. I mean, how close you want your heart to be? It's in your chest. That's as close as it can get. Amen. What would you think if somebody come up to you and say, I just feel like my heart's so far away from me. Hey man, put your hand on your chest. Feel that thumpity thump. That's your heart. It's in you. God said, God said that with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that he himself moved into you and you became the temple of the living God. So, so he didn't go anywhere. You're not far from God. But by saying things like that, I just feel cold. Well, you probably are. You need to get closer to the fire again. Right? But the more you say that, the more your mind talks to you. Am I helping anyone? Well, I just feel like I don't have the relationship with God like I used to have. Probably not. But the more you say that, the more you'll want the things of God. The, the less you'll want the things of God. Amen. People will come to me and say, Pastor, isn't praying hard? No, praying's a joy. You mean you always feel like praying? Didn't say that. But I'm sure not going to talk the other. Then when your opportunity clock goes off and it's time to get up and pray, you go, oh, it's so hard to get up and pray. Here's what we'll hear next. <laughs> it's over. You'll be like Lily. Lily, I'll say, Lily, it's night, night time. She'll go lay down in her bed and go. <laughs> <laughs> then she'll open her eye. <laughs> Amen. Destroying the desired results. What you say, let it stay said. I'm the healed of the Lord. Well, what if I don't feel any better? That's not the point. Are you healed or not? If you are, then feelings are secondary. Well, what if I need to go to the doctor? Go, but don't change what you're saying. 
Going to the doctor is not going to cause you to not be healed. Taking medicine is not going to stop you from being healed. Medicine never heals anybody. It just holds the symptoms down. While healing's coming. And there are people you know and I know, if they'd go take some medicine and alleviate themselves of the pain, they could operate their faith better. But the whole time you're taking that medicine, thank you, Lord, for this relief. Thank you, Lord, for this pain relief. But I speak to the symptoms, and I speak to the circumstance, and I tell my body to be whole and well in Jesus' name. Somebody tells you to throw your medicine away, run from them or kick them in the head, one of the two. Because they don't know what they're talking about. That is not faith, and we're going to get into that. Oh, am I helping you today? Do you see that? Don't destroy your desired results with your words. Nothing will kill the crop of victory in your life quicker than your words. Because your circumstances are designed to respond to what you say. And the more you say, I'm healed, the more you starve sickness of the power to make you sick. The more you say, I'm prosperous, you starve poverty from the ability to make you poor. When Hezekiah received that letter from Sennacherib, and he said, you know, I know you're saying that your God's going to deliver you. He said, but the God's on the other side of the river and, and the God's of the hills, and they thought the same thing, but it didn't happen. He said, I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to destroy everybody. And, and Hezekiah took that to the Lord and laid it out before the Lord and said, now this is what they're saying. What do you say? And God said, not only will he not come in this city, he won't even shoot an arrow in this city. And sure enough, he didn't. God sent an angel and killed 185,000 men. And, and instead of being in trouble, they had a great spoil. I don't care where you're at. Instead of the problem overwhelming you, you can end up overwhelming the problem. People say, yeah, but you don't know what I'm dealing with. No, they don't know who they're dealing with. My problem has no idea who they're picking on. They're picking on somebody that has the power of the word behind them. And what I say, I'll get. There's nothing in the Bible that says what your problem says is what you'll get. It says what you say is what you'll get. And if you won't say what the problem's saying, you won't get what the problem's saying. Amen. Amen. I have what I say. You say whatever you want. I have what I say. Oh, glory. Number two. A misunderstanding of corresponding action. A misunderstanding of corresponding action. This is why some have what they call faith failures. Notice James chapter 2, verse 14. And we'll read down through verse 18. James chapter 2, verse 14. What does it profit, my brother? Now let me get let's get the context here. All right? What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If Now look, here's the context. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be filled, all of you warmed and filled, notwithstanding, all of you give, not, give them not those things which are necessary to the body. Now let's stop right here for a minute. What does it profit? What is the understood subject that is described by it? Faith. What does faith profit? Now, now, wait a minute. Understand what he's saying here. Here's, here's what they're saying. One of you say unto them, depart in peace. Just go on. Be warmed, brother. Be filled. In other words, I believe God you're going to get some clothes. I believe God you're going to get some groceries. This is the context. He says, your faith is not profiting that person. 
Next verse, please. Even so, faith, if it doth not have works, is dead being alone. Well, what's the faith he's talking about? The faith that person just said they were exercising for that person to have clothes or food. Are you following me? Verse 18. A man may say, you have faith and I have works. James says, show me your faith without your works. In other words, that's what people are doing. Be blessed, brother. Be filled. And he says, I'll show you my faith by my works. Meaning what? I'll go buy him a shirt. I'll take him down and feed him. This is the context of what James is saying. All right? Now, a lot of people that say they are in faith are trying to exercise full faith towards what they say they're believing for, and their faith hasn't been sufficiently built yet. Are you following me? This is where a lot of people miss it, and they get into trouble, and they call it faith failures. And, and this is so important, I'm going to spend some time on it. Faith is accompanied by action. Don't misunderstand that. But the action will be in proportion to the faith you have. There's a woman that came to church one time. She came and started hearing some of these things that we, we teach. And uh, she just decided God was going to meet all of her needs and pay all of her family's bills. So she just decided because she could have what she says, she didn't need to pay her bills anymore. And every time she'd get a bill, she'd stuff it under the rug. I'm serious. Put it under the rug. Things started getting turned off. And her husband said, what in the world's going on? I mean, he made good money. Why is our lights getting cut off? Why is our gas being cut off? Oh, oh, I've been believing God. Well, there's nowhere in the Bible that says you don't have to pay your bills and God will just pay them for you. You can't confess that. Now, Lord, I'm just not going to pay my bills. I believe you're going to send West Star a check. Now, you know, we think about that and we think, we think well, you know, you know, but Pastor, no, 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 no. Now, now, now listen, although you may not go to that extreme, the reason why some people's faith isn't working for them is because they're not working it proportion to the amount they have. They're trying to harvest something they don't have the faith for. Are you with me? If you're believing you're healed, don't stop taking your medicine and call it corresponding action. Well, you know, faith without works is dead, and if I believe I'm healed, why am I taking medicine? You don't, if, listen, if you have to ask why, you don't have faith. You better keep taking your medicine. <laughs> listen. I believe God's a healer as much or more than anybody I know. I do my best to live by faith. But if I'm not making any progress, I'm going to the doctor. People say, yeah, but you know, Brother Hagin, he's, let, let me tell you something about Brother Hagin. And, and I revere Kenneth Hagin, and, and I would never, I don't know if, anything of importance that I've ever disagreed with him on. But you got to understand something. When he would say his faith was in God and not in the doctor, you know a large reason why? There was nothing the doctors could do for him. The doctors told him when he was a boy of 15, 16 years of age, they said every person that has ever been diagnosed with this, with this disease in the history that we know has died at, by the time they were 17. And the one doctor on his case that at one time had, was the, the, the world-renowned specialist in that case, he said, if we could take your whole heart out and, and empty your whole chest and redo everything, we might be able to save you. But he said, we can't do that. He didn't have any choice but to believe God only. 
Are you following me with this? So, of course, he didn't put faith in the, the, the doctor could give him no help. You're probably not in that case. And it causes your faith to be weakened. When you say, well, I'm not going to go to the doctor because I'm in faith. Do you have sufficient faith? Are you going to have enough time to build your faith? Now, I said again, some of these things shouldn't have to be said, but they have to be said. There, there are people have a big bill due at the end of the year, and they start believing God at the 25th of December. I've had people come to me a week before Christmas. Oh, pastor, pray with us. We don't have any money to buy our kids Christmas gifts. You've known that all year. Christmas comes on December 25th every year. You've had a year to be putting back, a year to be exercising your faith. Faith is not a magic Twinkie wand. And there it is. That's not how it works. <laughs> Am I helping you? Yeah, but I don't believe the doctor's my source. I don't believe the doctor's my source either. They, doctors can't heal anybody. But they can help me get in a good spot so I can exercise my faith and get healing. There's no, no sense suffering with pain and suffering with, with the, the, the symptoms when you could take a, 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 a bit of medicine and hold the symptoms down while you're believing God. Amen. Amen. Are you following me? Well, Pastor, you go to the doctor. Listen, I go to the doctor a lot less than some people I know, but if I got to go, I'll go. Uh -huh. yes. Well, I thought you was a faith man. I am. That's why I don't have to go much. But if you got to go, go. Amen. Am I helping you? Yes. Listen, a lot of people suffer needlessly, and they call their suffering faith. And their suffering is not faith. It's foolishness. Well, what if God tells me not to go to the doctor? Then you better know it's God. And if you got to ask me if it's God talking to you, it's not God. Go to the doctor. Well, pastor, is this God talking to me? No, it's not. Go to the doctor. I'll just help you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If you're believing for your eyes to be healed, don't break your glasses and call it corresponding action. I had a guy do that in a meeting where I was at. I believe the Lord's healed my eyes. And he came up in front of everybody and just crunched his glasses up. Expensive glasses. I didn't tell him to do it. I thought, Lord, and not just crunched them up, stomped on them. And he felt his way back to his chair. <laughs> Say, what happened next time you saw him? He had new glasses. <laughs> what do I do if I'm believing God to restore my vision? Well, don't throw your glasses away. Amen. I mean... That hadn't hurt you up till now. Well, I'm, I'm believing God for restoration of my eyes. Okay, praise God. Don't throw your glasses away. Amen. 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 Sit there with your glasses on and, and you can declare the word of God. Father, I thank you that blessed are my eyes for they see and my ears for they hear. I thank you that the hearing ear and the seeing eye, you've made them both and mine are good. I thank you for the restoration and the rejuvenation of my eyesight. Moses was 120 years old and his eyes were not dim. Amen. Do you see that? Well, then what do I do? Sit right there with your glasses on, work, read, do whatever you got to do. Why? That's proper, listen to me, corresponding action. The proper corresponding action is what you believe in your heart. Do you believe you're healed? 
I do believe I'm healed. But if I was healed, would I, would I have to wear glasses? Now see? Now hang on. That's where people miss it. Well, if I was healed, I wouldn't have any pain. No, that's not what the Bible says. You will find not one scripture in the Bible that says, if hands are laid on you and you're healed, you'll have no pain. It says Jesus carried your pain. So that means it's his desire to alleviate it. But if everything was instantaneous, what need would there be for faith? Amen. Well, I believe my child's well, but they don't look like they're getting any better. Now, wait a minute. What's the corresponding action in your, in your case? Thank God my child's following the plan of God for their life. Thank you, Lord, that you're working a perfect work in my child. Thank you that I trained them up the best that I knew how to follow the plan and leading of God in their life. And I thank you, Lord, that my children are following God's plan for them. And I thank you that even now the angels are causing the events to be set in motion whereby my children will hear the gospel and turn their lives to Jesus. Amen. What if I'm believing for a manifestation in their lives physically or, or, or mentally or whatever it is? Then you hold fast to what the Word says. I thank you that my child has a sound mind. I thank you that my child is, 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 is exactly operating to the proportion of wisdom and knowledge that they should be operating in. Amen. Why? Because you'll have what you say. And the appropriate corresponding action is to quote the word. Because if you stay in faith, you'll eventually see all those things change. But you can't rush the result by taking some extreme actions. You're not going to paint God in the corner and make him do anything. Well, I need this bill paid by Friday, so I'll just write out the check Wednesday and send it in. And God will have to. No, he won't. You'll hear boing, boing, boing. That check will bounce all over that office. Yeah, but he said, no, he never said, thou shalt write a hot check and I'll pay it. What would the corresponding action be? Well, you might write out the check and put it in your bill drawer or put it in your to be paid file or whatever. And you're attaching your faith to the word and that was as far as you could go. Am I helping you? That's proper corresponding action. And you get up every day, you put the word in your heart, speak it out of your mouth and things will begin to change. But you got to do that every day. Amen. Well, what if the thought comes, what are you going to do? You've done all you know to do. Now what are you going to do? Here's the proper corresponding action. I'm not doing anything. I've said it. I believe I have received it. I've, I've operated my faith and took the action I can take. Now I'm not doing anything. Well, where's that in the Word? The man put seed in the ground and slept and rose night and day and got up and went to bed and got up and went to bed and the seed was springing forth and growing and he didn't even know how. He did all he could do. He planted the seed and that's all he could do. You might have been believing God for a financial breakthrough today and you came up and sowed a seed. That's all you can do. Now you keep it watered with your words and expect God to give you the increase. Amen. Amen. See, it's, it's commensurate with, your, with your, your measure of faith. What, what can you believe God for? Hallelujah. Number three. Reasons that people seemingly have faith failures. Trying to harvest too early. Trying to harvest too early. Mark chapter 4. And let's look at uh, verse 26 through 29. Mark 4, 26 through 29. And he said, so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground. And should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up. He does not know how. For the earth brings forth fruit of herself. First notice the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. 
But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he puts in the sickle and reaps because the harvest has come. The Weiss Bible says whenever the fruit permits, immediately he sends forth the sickle because the harvest stands ready. Notice the blade, the ear, the full corn. It's the progression. The blade, the ear, and the full corn. If you try to harvest the blade, you're going to destroy your future. Because the blade's just the sprout. Faith is beginning to bring forth. Faith is starting to produce. Amen. But then the blade, then there's the ear. So now there's evidence that there's some fruit there. But watch, it's immature. It's it's not going to be everything you need it to be. Amen. that, That corn hadn't matured enough to have an ear of corn. I mean, you might get something that's corn-like, but it's not going to be anything you want to put some butter on, black pepper, and right? Oh, glory. Or putting a grill with the shuck still on it. Oh, Lord. Anyway. So you see the, the blade, you see the, the sprout. You know, when uh, one year they uh, took our lawn off our house, destroyed it and on purpose. We were going to plant some, some seed and they did the same thing here at the church. And uh, the guy told me, he said, now, you know, in a few days, a week or so, you know, you're going to, the grass is going to spring up and it's, you know, you keep it watered. And he said, but it's going to be very important that nobody walks on it. He said, don't do anything with it. Just let it grow. All right. He said, because it's going to keep getting thicker and thicker. And the more you let it grow, it'll get thicker and thicker. And he gave me a time. He said, and then you can either call us or, or, or we can tell you when, and then you can cut it. But he said, when you cut it, you, you, you don't want to cut it real short. Because it's still real tender. You want to raise your mower up and cut it. Is that right? Why? Because it's still tender. If I want a yard full of grass, I got to treat the sprout right. That's not all there's going to be. Hallelujah. And notice he said, when the fruit permits. If you try to harvest the blade, there'll never be any fruit. Now, we're going to talk about this in just a moment. If, if you, but if you'll be patient. The, the Bible said the earth brings forth of itself. It knows what to do. Amen. A lot of people say faith failed when the fact of the matter is they tried to reap their harvest before the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, your spirit will work to get you what you desire. And you can get into things and call it your harvest, and you don't have sufficient faith to sustain it. Now, you don't want to piddle foot around and drag your feet and just be lazy and just get satisfied. Amen. Amen. But faith is progression. There's levels of faith. If you're believing God for a a different house, what can you believe Him for? Can you be realistic? Well, I can believe Him for whatever I want. Can you? How many times so far have you got whatever you want? Now, I'm not, I'm not being ugly. I'm, I'm just saying, you've got to think about those things. 
Am I really in that position? If, if, if you're moving out of a one-bedroom apartment, have you really built your faith sufficiently to believe for that 375,000 four-bedroom, three-and-one-half bath with a pool in the backyard house? Now, if you have, go after it. But have you really? Because if you haven't, then maybe you need to start with a little smaller house. Yeah, but I want this one now. Well, I know, and most babies do want what they want now. You got to grow up. Amen. You know, anything's got wheels on it, the lily's a bicycle. We go to, we go to the, the Kroger, and, and she likes to get in, that, in that, that cart that has a little car on the front. She really likes the one that sits up top. But we'll get out of the car. She's, bicycle, bicycle. And she's reaching. And if we don't, if we don't get the one that's right there, she, oh my goodness, I want that bicycle. Well, number one, it's not a bicycle. Right? But she wants it right now. So you got to tell her there's one inside. We'll get one inside. But she's two. Well, 19 months. She wants it right now. Right? She doesn't know how to operate patience and understand the same things inside. This one inside's better. Hadn't been sitting out in 101 degrees for <laughs> however long. Right? Well, I'm just tired of where I live. I understand. But tiredness, being tired of something doesn't mean you're in faith. Faith is accompanied by peace and joy. Yeah. Oh, glory. Am I helping you today? Yeah. I'm just tired of living in these old apartments. Okay, that, that's fine, but you've got to move from being tired to being in faith. Amen. You say, Pastor, Pastor what, do you, what do you have for that? I have something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. You've got to go to the Word. You got to go to the Word. And on top of my confession, I wrote, The spiritual law is this, Lord. I'll have what I say. I remind him. He said, Put me in remembrance of my word. And I let him know this is spiritual law. Do, do you understand that? Amen. The Lord has brought us into the land that he promised. And he's given us our house, which is full of all good things. Through godly wisdom, our house is built, and it is established through understanding and by knowledge. Its chambers of every area are filled with all precious riches and valuables and with fine furniture and beautiful draperies. The Lord's led us by the straight and white way to the city where He could establish our home. We praise and confess that the Lord is good and that He satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with good. We prepare and put first things first and get things ready. Then we build our house and establish our home. Amen. Now, why am I saying this to you? Listen. First of all, we have a leading about when to do what God, what we feel like we need to do. Faith does not work in a rushed heart. You got to take your time. And be led. I don't want to be where I'm at next year. Okay, but you're not going to be somewhere different just because you don't want to be where you're at. That's part of it, but... See, because that's why I said very early. I, I know i got to quit. But that's why I said just a moment ago that your spirit will go after what you're desiring. And whether you know it or not, the number you put down on the paper is what those people are going to believe. And just because paper says you can afford something doesn't mean you can. Amen. Well, you know, I'll, I'll, they, they gave it to me, so it must be the Lord's will. Can you afford it? I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about going after something God told you to go after and Him telling you not to worry about the money. I mean, is it, see, because your spirit's going after something. 
If you didn't have the faith to get in the house, then how and how much of a struggle are you going to have to develop the faith to keep the house? It's better to be developing your faith for the house with no pressure on you where you're at. But people want to jump from $800 a month payment to $1,700 a month, more than double, and think it's not going to be any big deal. You got six, seven, eight, nine hundred more dollars a month now you got to believe for. Are you in a position to do it? Well, I'm believing to come out of debt. Praise God. Then you got to build your faith to stay out of debt. And if the Lord tells you it's okay to go into debt for a certain thing, then don't you worry about what anybody else thinks. You just do what the Lord told you was okay. Where the Lord leads you, He will lead you in proportion to the faith you have developed. Amen. And I've watched people get into houses and call them a blessing, and that house was a noose around their neck. And it became a struggle. What God gives you, He says, I have given you richly all things to enjoy. Not to go home. Oh, Lord. God doesn't want you to live in a house and you don't have no furniture to put in your house. Those goodwill curtains are not going to look good in that $375,000 house. Don't make fun of my curtains. Listen, I'm not. I'm the guy that's wore 75 cent suits. Hello? (laughs) What I'm trying to tell you is that's what you got to see. People will press their way into a house and their their will will bring it to them and, 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 and they're still using a card table for a dinner table. And they got the big nice living room they wanted and they got the sitting room and the big nice dining room. But them folding chairs and card table don't look good in that in that mahogany lined dining room. And then people come over to their house and wonder, well, what's wrong with them? Remember the scripture I just read? It's full, its chambers are filled with precious riches and valuables and beautiful draperies. Amen. Am I helping you? Now, let's look at this real quick. Now, I'm just saying that to, to I got to finish. I'm just saying that to say this. So if, if you want a better house, you want a bigger house, where's your faith? Spend time building your faith for a house. Don't just say God's going to give me something and call that faith. Amen. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And you got to be hearing the word of God on your house. you got to be hearing the word of God on the things that, that, that God wants to bring to you. Amen? Let me, let me give you these scriptures real quick and we'll be done. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. I hear stomachs rumbling. <laughs> Say amen. <laughs> like you ask Lily, Lily, what does Eeyore say? And she gets this look on her face. <laughs> And I say, that sounds exactly like him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, I should have put a video up of her today. But. I told her that day we were going to school, and I was going down the steps with her, and I, and I had her, we, I was taking her to school, Pastor Michelle was saying bye, and I said, Lily, tell Mommy, I'll call you, and I pointed like that, and Lily turned around and said, i call you. <laughs> Amen. So... <laughs> Amen. It's tough being her favorite, but I'll, I'll get through it somehow. <laughs> Hebrews 6, verse 12. That all of you be not slothful, but followers of them, notice, who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Here's the key. Notice what happens to those who operate faith and patience. They inherit the promises. That's a given. It's a promise. But what's the key? Not just faith, patience. Why? It takes faith, patience to build your faith. But a lot of times people jump out and do things 
That's not faith. And then it falls apart or it ends up being a problem. And people say, oh, their faith failed. No, their faith didn't fail. They didn't operate patience. Listen, we talk about get-rich-quick schemes, and, and, you know, we'll laugh at those commercials that say, you know, here's, take this one pill every day, and you don't have to exercise, and you don't have to eat right, and the pounds will just melt away. That, no. That won't happen. There's, there's something that has to be done, and it takes patience. Right? If you're going to build wealth, you've got to build wealth. Doesn't happen overnight. That's called a Ponzi scheme. Money is saved one dollar at a time. And you do it, what do you do? Every week you put something in the bank. Every week, every month, right? And what's happening? You're building your wealth. Now I'm saying this for a reason. Amen. Amen. Every day you're getting up, you're watching what you eat, you're exercising, you're doing the do's, right? You're doing what you know to do. And what's happening? Eventually you're going to start seeing a change. You don't want to be the guy that hadn't worked out for five years and come January he gets a gym membership and goes to one workout and then he's wanting to pose in the mirror to see a change. <laughs> Nothing's changed, slick. <laughs> right? But you let that guy keep going and you let that guy keep getting up in the morning and doing what he's doing and, and, and doing what he knows to do. He will see a change. And it may take six months, it may take three months, the better part of a year. But at the end of that year, he will see a different person in that mirror than he saw at the beginning of the year. Why? Because his faith in what he was doing and his patience to keep doing it paid off. You put your faith in the Word of God. And what God said is what will happen in my life. And then you just get up every day and patiently do it. And you'll see the results. One last scripture. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 36. For all of you have need of patience. That after you've done the will of God, all of you might receive the promise. Here it is again. Doing the will of God is faith. But he says you have need of patience, that after you've operated your faith, you might receive. So it is possible to step out in what a person calls faith and not add patience and not receive. And people call that a faith failure. Faith didn't fail. They short-circuited their faith by not being patient. Yeah, but they said in six months they're going to do this if. But, 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 but wait a minute, what did God say? See, you're calling things that are like they are. They don't know who they're dealing with. My father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He said all the silver and all the gold belong to him. He can bring me however much I need whenever I need it. Don't threaten me. You know who my daddy is? I'm serious. Don't threaten. That's my mindset about things. They can't tell me what to believe. Don't tell me this has got to happen. It's got to be that way. You do not have the right to tell me it's got to be that way. The only thing that can tell me what I should base my future on is the Word of God. And it tells me my future is limitless. It tells me I can have what I say and what I can believe for. And what I say is what I'll get. Amen. But I just got to be patient. I just got to patiently say it. Don't short circuit your faith with impatience. Now, do you see that? And I'll finish with this last statement. Don't wait until you're right up against the deadline, so to speak, to try to start getting in faith. If you're battling symptoms in your body, it's not the time, it's not, listen, you don't wait till they explode to try to finally start getting in the Word. Deal with it now. Matter of fact, if you're here and you have no symptoms in your body, that's the perfect time to be quoting and declaring the healing Word of God over your body every day. 
while you're building faith. Amen? But where a lot of people miss it is they just don't give the word enough time to work. It takes a period of time. Yeah, but I believe I'll get instantly healed. You have no promise in the word that says you'll be instantly healed. Doesn't exist. It says that they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You might be instantly healed, but there's no promise that says you will be instantaneously healed. Yeah, but look at all those people for Jesus. Right, so we know it's possible. But what I'm saying is you don't have that promise. What do I have the promise of? That I will recover. That recovery might be instantaneous or it might take a few weeks, few days, few months, few hours, few minutes. But I have a promise that I will recover. Well, what do I do while I'm in the process of recovering? You keep pumping the word into that situation. Hands were laid on me. Those of you that had hands laid on you today, you keep the switch of faith turned on. You go home today and you declare hands were laid on me. I'm healed in Jesus' name. Jesus said they would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. So hands were laid on me. I was the sick, but now I'm in the process of recovering. Oh, glory. Can we stand up today? Well, I could keep, I could keep preaching right there for another hour. I won't. Amen. Don't you love faith? Yes. I, love, I love to preach on faith. Love to teach on faith. Faith is what we do. We are faith builders. Amen. Well, be sure and be back with us tonight. We're going to get into some wonderful things from the Word of God. I believe God. Yeah, I believe God. Thank you, Jesus. All of you that uh, came to the, the Kansas meetings with Pastor Nancy, thank you. We, Kansas meetings, Arkansas meetings. We, we, we had some Kansas people in Arkansas. Praise God. That's how it was. Amen. And we're so grateful. Always, always does my heart good to see people that travel to hear the word. Uh, does my heart good to know you are watching online. Those of you that watch, God bless you. Thank you so much for being a part of what God's doing. Amen. And you're the best church in the world because I say so. Amen. That's how it is. So praise God. Isn't God good? So we'll be back at 6 o'clock tonight for another great faith building service. So come on, say it with me. The vision of our church will always be to build people's faith and frame their world by the word of God. And you and I will always be world changers. God bless you.